Hello again, and uh, welcome back to Joe's Home Flavors. Today we're going to be cooking pork steak sandwich. Hi, so today we're going to be working with uh, pork cutlets. You can also work with the uh, with the shoulder, with the uh, um, loin, or with leg even. Um, it's not about the cut of the of the pork. It's it's about uh, how you prepare it, how you marinate it. So let's get on with it. So first thing you need to do is get rid of that bone. This is, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, if you want you can use um, a smaller knife or even a, a bony knife uh, which is something that looks like that. Uh, in this particular case because it's just a small bone uh, you don't really need it um, and I, I'm not going to use it. Um, so it's just one small little bone that we have here and we need to obviously get rid of it and that's it and now we need to get rid of that excess fat don't throw that away because you can use uh, all of that to make uh, meat stock which you can then use for soups and um, and um, stews etc or even just just the stock okay so get rid of um, most of the, the fat, so the excess fat, don't get rid of all of it because obviously you will need some of it to render um, when it's frying. Now, we basically want to make it as thin as possible. Don't mind, um, don't, 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 um, don't worry about uh, making odd um, uh, pieces of meat rather than, than a full steak, for example, because the idea is to make it make these slices as thin as possible so they will cook really fast and they will also take uh, all the marinades almost instantly so something like that this this for example as you can see it's it's thin it's really thin steak so just put in the bowl there because we're going to to work our marinades in a in a bowl and um, again there's a, a piece that's a bit um, too fat here so we go with the knife, always with, a, with your hand slightly curved upwards so you are protected from the blade and just slowly try to work your way into the meat. Um, again, don't worry about your cut being perfect because we're going for thin slices of meat, not um, a steak as, as it were. Okay, another one really uh, almost transparent piece of meat in there and this is why you can work with the um, with um, different parts of the pork because it's all about it's not about the cut of the pork and by that I mean the part of the pork that we uh, we use but it's about the cut the actual cut and how thin it is so if you're not uh, comfortable doing this you can always ask, ask your butcher to slice it as thin as possible um, so that you can uh, you can skip this this step personally um, if I if I go by the butchers uh, I ask them to do it if um, if I'm just in a local supermarket sort of thing uh, they don't, don't have a butcher they have pre-packed uh, meat which is the case here and uh, I just do it myself right again we have a pretty half uh, well maybe a centimeter thick steak we want it we want to go uh, curve hand we want to go with the knife from the top and then trying to open it a little bit slowly but steady and surely and this is why it's very important to have a sharp knife because obviously and um, you don't want to be going back and forth with a knife, you want to go as many, uh, as less uh, s um, strokes as possible. Again, bits like this, don't worry about it, just try to butterfly them like this, so that they get really thin. See, now it's twice the size in there. This one is fine. And we, we want also to keep some of the fat. We don't want to get rid of all of the fat because some of that will render into the sauce as well which is um, also very, very, very nice. Again, very thin. So now that we have our meat cut, we will need uh, to marinate it. So for this marinade, 
we're gonna start with white wine and this is about half pint of, of white wine right and then we need some bay leaves um, we need a few uh, garlic cloves um, we need to just smash them and, um, and just put them in there peel and everything okay now we need to season it with some salt some white pepper some uh, sweet paprika these three are like the, the three musketeers uh, they always um, in my table because I use them uh, quite a lot so this is our marinade we have then some uh, olive oil some butter and some mustard which we will need uh, when we uh, fry the steaks but for now I'm just going to massage this meat and make sure that uh, all those sauces get everywhere all those flavors this is called this process is called um, this marinade is called vina danish which means wine and garlic you know me and you know what I think about the wine uh, the cooking wine right so don't use cooking wine use proper wine so yeah so now we're going to reserve that okay let's start uh, let's get our steaks they've been uh, like I told you uh, marinating here for uh, a little over two hours so I'm gonna get this uh, up going a little bit of olive oil we want that butter in so we use combined um, the combined taste of the olive oil and the butter and um, so it makes the whole thing richer in terms of flavor and, and, and smoother but also the mustard will give it the, the tang that we need on the low heat let it soak up um, those flavors don't need to, to go crazy on, um, on the temperature and uh, make sure that you cook thoroughly maybe a, a couple of minutes to three minutes uh, on each side and yeah and you're ready to go so we have a couple of slices of bread here uh, this is baker bread it's not uh, supermarket bread okay our steak is pretty much done so I'm turning off the hob now I'm going to place this on one slice of, of bread this goes back in there and now this is one of the secrets of this um, concoction I'm going to take just a little bit of that marinade into the sauce and work it into that fat a little bit now I'm going to take some of that some of that fat put on this side of the bread and on top of that one other way to uh, do this is by actually not using the mustard on the on the on the on the cooking straight away and uh, just use the, the combined fats and then uh, use it obviously um, on the bread, on the sides of the bread um, when, you, when you're assembling the, the sandwich, okay? So I'm going to try this now and uh, tell you how it is. So let's go and have a chunk of this um, sandwich and see how that tastes. Um, you can get obviously um, access to all the ingredients uh, on my website. Um, all the recipes there, all the ingredients and all the things you need uh, to make this possible. And in this particular case I'm using um, uh, baker's uh, tin loaf of bread but you can have rustic bread, actually it should be with rustic bread and, uh, or even uh, sourdough bread um, and, uh, but yeah this works with any bread to be honest, let's see how it goes. Only took a couple of minutes on each side because it's really thin, so it is important the thickness of the of the meat. Also, the thinner it is, the better um, it aggregates all those flavors, which is what we're going for. You can't go wrong with this. And um, many a day, this would would be my lunch, just a bifana, as we call it in Portuguese, and sometimes with caldo verde, which is a green soup, which um, I'm also making a recipe later on. So yeah, give it a go and uh, let me know what you think of it. Uh, this is really, really easy to do. And uh, if you do like it, um, give me a, thumb, uh, a thumbs up. 
um, register to the channel, so subscribe to the channel if you can. Sorry, I'm, I'm babbling today. And um, um, give me a follow and uh, share with your friends. And uh, by all means, give it a go and, uh, and let me know how, how it went for you. Okay? So I'm going to have a sip of wine now and then I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.